If you're used to sections and columns, or if you're completely new to Elementor, using containers can be a little confusing. But really, there's only a few things to keep in mind to achieve a fully responsive layout like this within a single container. And this is just an example, a pretty basic one. You can do a lot with containers. But if you're feeling a little lost, like I did just a few days ago, no worries, it's pretty simple. So with sections and columns, to achieve a layout like this, you basically only had one option because everything else would mean you had to compromise on either your tablet view or on your desktop view. So really, your only option was to create numerous sections and hide some of them for tablet and hide some of them for desktop. So as you can tell, this one on my desktop view is actually created from two different sections. Now you could say, okay, you can do this in one section. And you could, if you used intersections, you can do this with one section, but what happens is, let me just go ahead and duplicate this and add in some of some padding on top. And I'm going to do the same for this one. And you can see it's not really dis the same layout. It's aligned well, it looks good, but it's not the same thing. And on tablet, there is just no way this is ever going to work. So really, no matter what you do with sections and columns, there's just no way to achieve this within one section. Because even if you just add in one more column here, there's no way to get it over here. And the issue you run into always is going to be on your tablet view. If you have three columns in a row and you make each of them 50%, what happens is you're going to get this. It's not two by two. It's going to be two, one, two, one every single time. There's no way to get around this. With containers, it's really easy. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a new container. And I'm going to press the direction row. I'm going to add in my first container over here. The, the content really doesn't matter, but just so we get the exact same layout, I'm just going to copy and paste this. I'm going to paste it in here and do the same with the text editor. I'm going to paste it in this container. You can see everything I'm doing over here, the main container, and then we have one container. Then inside that container, we have a heading and a text editor. And I'm just going to duplicate this one. I'm going to duplicate it again. Now I have three. I'm just going to change out the content real quick. By the way, I'll be hosting a new series called Wizards of Webcraft, where I will be reviewing your websites. So I would love it if you joined us to apply and to get more information, check the link in the description. And now if I add another container, we have the same thing happen as with our columns over here, they get squished up and it doesn't get pushed down. So the way we do that is we're going to go into our main container. So the largest container, and we're going to go into wrap, and we're going to set it to wrap. The way we fix this is by going into our first container and going under content width, and we're going to set it to full width. It has to be full width. Then we're going to set the width to percentages, and we're going to type in 33. And we're going to do the same thing for a second one, or we can really just copy and paste the style and do the same for all of them really. You're going to go into your container content width, full width, percentages, and however many you have, that's how many you're going to have to do. If you have four, you're going to do 25%. I'm going to do three. So 33, and we're still not getting three on top. Now that is because we have to go into our main container again, and we have to set this gap between elements to zero. Now you can tell they're kind of squished together. Now we want them to have a little bit of breathing room. So the way we're going to do that is pretty much the same as you would with columns, you're going to go into each container individually at go under advanced and you're going to add in the paddings. So we have three, but we need six. So I'm going to go ahead and go into this one, copy style, paste it into this bottom one, but I'm going to go ahead under advanced. I'm going to add in some padding at the top just so it breeds a little. I'm just going to copy and paste the second and the third one. And I'm going to go into my tablet view. And we have the same thing happen. One, two, three, and we want it to be one, two, one, two, one, two. The solution is simple, you're just going to go into your container, layout full width, content width full width, set the width to percentages and set it to 50. And you're going to do that for all of them. Full width, pick percentages 50. Now, obviously, the paddings are all messed up. You have to fix that by hand. So the way I usually do it is just go into the largest container, add a padding of 30 to the left and to the right, and then just unlink everything and just add paddings on the right side of the left one, on the left side of the right one, and on the top 
and or bottom, depending on which container I'm working with. And just like that, you have a container that is fully responsive from your desktop to your tablet. And on mobile, it's really not an issue. It really was not an issue before. On mobile, even before, it was quite simple to just make one column. But over here is the same principle. You're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and go into my largest container, unlink the padding. I usually do 20 on the left, 20 on the right for mobile. And then again, just set the paddings for each container individually. And let's just check this out on the live site. I'm going to make this whole container have a gray background, just so we're completely sure we're looking at the right one. And you can tell it's perfectly responsive. It snaps from three in a row to two in a row to one in a row. So just to recap, what you have to do to achieve this, you have to go into your main container and make sure the wrap is set to wrap. Otherwise you get this. You have to make sure the gap between elements is set to zero. Otherwise you're going to get this. And you also have to make sure that each individual container within that large container has their content width set to full width and then the width to the appropriate amount. But if you set the content width to boxed, you get this. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up and thank you for watching.